You want me to go around with you and tell everyone that mom's gonna die. What is the point of that? Breaking the news, watching them cry, dealing with their emotions. How depressing is that gonna be? Just call them. Alex, nobody wants to do any of this. But we need to tell Grandpa and Tootie and a few close friends. They have the right to know and to be able to say goodbye. I'm not talking about Mom with anyone. Whatever you fought about with her at Christmas, you need to drop it. Grow up. You love your mother, your mother loves you. Move on. I can't drop it. You have to. You don't really have a clue, do you? Dad, Mom was cheating on you. That is what we fought about. When I was home at Christmas, I caught her with another guy. It made me sick to see her near you. I went back to school thinking that that was it. I was done with her. And I was gonna call you and tell you everything. But then the accident happened. I was waiting for her to wake up. didn't even suspect, right? <sighs> that disgusted me too, because you're always so busy. You know, Mum, that's, that's probably true. But honestly, I have a shitload of things to regret right now, okay? I regret not having a date for tomorrow's stupid dance. I regret being too weird to make any friends. Definitely regret making all those shitty films with Ben. I'm guessing you saw the email I got from Matt. No? Didn't see it while going through all my shit? Here, here to take a look. Definitely gonna regret doing literally no schoolwork this year. Greg. I know. Admission rescinded due to Significant change in my academic record. Oh well. No uni next year, which sucks for you, because it's going to be so hard for you to go through all my shit. Can, can you just do me a favour, Mum? Can you, just, can you just leave me alone, okay? I'm just going to sit here and regret stuff. Okay, just let me think about all the things I've done and all the things I haven't done and just and just regret the living shit out of it, okay? I just found her yesterday. We have to go through this together, you and Scotty and I. And I need to go around and tell people what's happening. Sometimes I'll need you to come with me, other times I need you to watch Scotty. You want me to go around with you and tell everyone that Mom's gonna die? What, what's the point of that? Breaking the news and watching them cry and dealing with their emotions? God, how depressing is that gonna be? Can't you just call them? Because nobody wants to do any of this, but we need to tell Grandpa and Tootie and a few close friends. They have the right to know and to be able to say goodbye. I just don't want to talk about Mom with anybody. Whatever you fought with her at Christmas, you need to drop it. I can't you. drop it! You have to. God, you really don't know, do you? Dad, she was cheating on you. That's what we fought about. 
When I was home at Christmas, I caught her and some guy. And it made me so sick to even see her near you. And so I went back to school thinking that was it. That I was done with her and I was gonna call and tell you everything. But then, but then the accident happened and I don't know, I just was waiting for her to wake up. And you didn't even suspect a thing, right? God, yeah. That disgusted me too, because you're always so busy. You're with some guy, what does that mean? <sighs> me and Becky were on our way to swim at Black Point Pool when I see mom and some douchebag walk into a house. His house, I guess. Just a guy, it could have been anybody. His hand was on her ass, it was gross. I'm sure it was her. Yeah. Then what? Then nothing, she went into the house. I mean, that's what we're supposed to be doing, so if you're doing well, that's, that's good. <laughs> you're balanced, though, so... Well, I mean, I, I think you're great. I, <laughs> you I, don't... I, I envy that in you, though. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> oh, this is nice. <laughs> it is nice. You know, um... I actually wanted to bring you here today for another reason. Um, I wanted to ask your forgiveness. I don't expect you to forgive me, but... <laughs> forgive you for what? For keeping you and Tommy apart. Oh. Kathy, you two were meant to be together. You had real love and everyone saw it, I saw it. <laughs> but I kept you apart. And it wasn't even just because of those stupid deferrals. I was so jealous of you. Yeah, I was jealous of you. And you and Tommy had real love and I didn't. And I didn't want to be the one who was left with no one. You know? It was a horrible thing to do. And I... I really want to make it right. How can you do that? Well, I can do it if the two of you get deferrals. It's too late for that. Kathy, it's silly to even talk Kathy, about Kathy, it is that. not, it's no. Late. Come on, it is not too late. You'll see, you and Tommy will see both of you. It's not true. Oh, Kathy. I wanted to bring you here on this trip because I have something to give you. This is Madame's address. She does deferrals. She is who you apply to and she is who you have to go and see. How did you get that? It took me a long time. You know, it was quite a journey, but... <laughs> I had years to think about you and us and what happened, and I had years to think about how to make it right. Now I want you to take this. It's up to you. I thought I gave you everything you wanted. You wanted out. I got you out. You wanted the truth. I told you the truth. And I told Daisy the truth. And she fucking killed herself. And I played the villain just like you wanted. And you come back here. Sweetness and nice. 
sad and contrite. And everybody congratulates you on your bravery. Meanwhile, I'm out back blowing guys for the money that you wanted. Think you're free? I'm free. And you can go choke on your average mediocre life. You know, it just bugs me. There are just so many buttons just waiting to be pressed. And it makes me wonder, why doesn't anyone press mine? Why am I so neglected? Why doesn't anyone just reach in, rip out the truth, and tell me that I'm a fucking whore? And that my parents Wish I were dead. Maybe I'm over here dying. <laughs> are, you, are you still thinking about it? <laughs> you have to give it up. You don't have the kind of time to dwell on that too much. I know, but it's just, she just <sighs> was right there. I, Call her. If you remotely told her half of what you told me about her, she'd at least consider. You met in the bathroom. Everything's an upgrade after that. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. Why? I'm drunk. I... You are not drunk. You're just <laughs> Yeah, but they're like painful giggles. I can't. I can't. Are you going to stop talking about Camille then? No. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, I, uh, I got it off Facebook. I know it sounds creepy, but she put it there. So. <sighs> okay. It's a voicemail. Oh. Hey, Camille. It's Felix Chester. Um, I'm not sure if I heard the beep, so I'm just going to stall for a couple seconds. Um, I don't know if you know me, or know of me, so this might sound a little weird, but uh, I have to try. <laughs> you might remember me as the guy who was singing to himself in the environmental studies group earlier today. The only reason I came there was to not so subtly run into you. And I know that's terrible, but if you think about it in like a 50s romance kind of way, then it just means... You know, when you're standing in line, or just walking, and you catch someone's eye, and you feel like for every moment you decide not to talk to them, you're missing out on something amazing. Um, I don't know. I sound ridiculous. Maybe you and I could meet up sometime, is what I'm trying to say. So, if you're interested, you know how to get a hold of me. I ho hope to see you soon. Bye. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> My art class took a trip to the Whitney, and Nate lives like right across the street. So I just thought I'd call him and leave him a message because he's been leaving me so many lately. I thought we agreed that you wouldn't be seeing Nate anymore. Yeah, I know. But he picked up. <laughs> he's like,
where are you? And I was like, at the Whitney. And he's like, meet me in the men's room on the third floor. And I was like, fine, <laughs> because I didn't want to go back to class and spend the rest of the morning staring at those Giorgio Keef flower vaginas. Those things gave me the creeps. So did you leave? Yes. Yeah. yeah, like we went in one of the stalls. And we're kissing and he's like, you look hot. So then I was like, then suck my dick. So he like gets down on his knees, which I have to admit is like the hottest thing that's ever happened to me. And then all of a sudden he started talking. He was like, I've missed you. I've been trying to call your house. <laughs> I was like, not about to have this conversation. Well, it sounds like he's genuinely concerned about you. Yeah. Well, I was like, I didn't get those messages because we're living in a shelter for the time being. And then he like looked at me like he didn't believe me. And I was like, what? He's like, nothing. So I like start to pull up my pants and he's like, well, what the fuck just happened? And I was like, well, you can't suck dick for shit. And that's when he hit you. Yeah. He just kept on hitting me and hitting me until the guards came in and took him off. And how did that make you feel when he hit you? It felt kind of good, actually. services contest. Oh, what? Yes. And everything got vetted through the casting people here and it was a very difficult decision and they only came up with seven winners. And you three oh, you are three. in the crowd. Wow. Yes. Okay. yes. So isn't that amazing? Oh my god. <laughs> isn't that so exciting? Okay. It's about the breakdown services contest. Oh my god. <laughs> And they've come up with the the finalists, the winners. Okay. And they only they only took seven people. Wow. And you are one of them. Oh my God. <laughs> Emily. Yeah. You have been selected. <laughs> Surprise?